Finally, we remind you that this is a smoke-free campus. Now sit back and enjoy the show.
was trying to fry an egg on the sidewalk in front of the drugstore. Good old Smokey, you got a hit. We were always saying that cool air was on its way in from Canada. I don't see any sign of cool air. Do you? Well, do you? Do I what? See any sign of cool air? You're blind, though! You're blind! See any sign of what, dear? Never mind. It wasn't important. When we met in 1938, it was November.
Come on, old boy, get lucky. The ball's in the dirt, he swings. That doesn't. Well, did the Washington Senators win here? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe they'll win next time. Those damn Yankees. What, dear? I'd like to lick those damn Yankees just once. Joel, how can you if they're the champions? One long ball here. That's all we need. One long ball here. Joel, if you keep this up, you're going to end up with a stroke. Or at least ulcers. Wham! Oh, Joel. My friend's sister and Doris White. They love baseball, but they don't suffer so. I've got bridge club tomorrow. I'm going to bed. Good night. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Good night. I mean, good night, little girl.
the Harding Shrine. Well, what do you want me to do? Just leave everything to me. But my job and my wife, this is a big operation. Can't let things like that stand in the way. So I just disappear? Very simple. But when I'm done being a ball player, where would I be then? Well, of course, that's fairly well known. Yes, but after all, how do you think some of those politicians got started around town? And parking lot owners. Still, if what they say is true enough. Listen, I've got something to trade here. I'm giving you a chance to be what you've wanted your whole life. In my business, we have what you call an escape clause. This isn't a real estate deal. If I don't like it, I ought to be able to get out. Get out? I have my wife to consider. Okay, okay. I don't want to hear any more about your wife. Or wives. They cause men more trouble than the Methodist Church. <laughs> I'm trying to be understanding, but all this haggling. All right, I'll give you a chance to get out. Well, sure, in that case. On the 24th of September. I wouldn't do it, but I don't want to see those damn Yankees win. You can say that again. It's a deal. It is. And the other hand, that's all. What do you expect to do? <laughs> Sign your name in blood or some phony stunt like that? Now, come on, the team needs you. But wait, I want to leave a note for my wife and get my shoes and my gloves. All right. Tell her we're going to Little America to interest Eskimos in split-level houses. <laughs> I'm nearly ready. I'll call a taxi.
I see a guy like you that's not covered, I get worried. I've been uncovered a long time. I don't worry. Everybody should have an insurance program. Next year, maybe. Oh. Hey, Smokey, how's that crossword coming? Very difficult. So Ferguson gave me the signal to steal. There's a pitch out. And when I got to suck it, everyone was waiting for me except for Ford, Fred. Hey, Sohovic, what's up? Three letter word for a sticky substance. Spit? No, that's four. Gum! Gum. Well, look, Rocky, what sign is this? Stop. 
luck. This is costing the club money. Hey, kid. Yeah, you. Come here. Well, what did they say your name was, Joe? Uh, yes, sir. Joe Hardy. You hit the ball pretty good. Thanks. How's your fielding? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I mean, my manager was supposed to be... Did you want me, Joe? Yes, Mr. Applegate. I... They want me to field something. Well, go ahead. You can do it. You know that. Oh, what position do you play? Well, I'd like to be shortstop. Okay, get out there. What do you think of my boy, Van Buren? Not bad. Not bad? Did he kiss the horse high right out of the park? Did he hit the fat end of the bat on that pill? Bye-bye, baby. How about that? Who's that there, Mel Allen? Three, four, dang! Say, he's got an arm. Got an arm? He's got an arm like a cannon. I want you to get a couple of Texas leaguers. Let me see how he backs up on them. What's the story on this kid? His name's Joe Hart. Rifle him home, Joe! Rifle him home! Okay, Joe. Come on in. Who's he been playing for? He weighs 145 pounds. Chews juicy fruit. You're a big help. You never played anything but sandlot ball, Mom. Huh? Well, where about? Out west. Uh, the Midwest. Oh, Hannibal. Hannibal, Missouri. Is that your hometown? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, boy, does it get hot there sometimes. We just sit around and wait for the cold air to come down from Canada. You do all right. Thanks. I'm thinking we might offer you a contract. Sing in one of our prom clubs for a little seasoning. Seasoning? That's ridiculous. How about it, kid? I don't think so. Well, what do you mean? I haven't got time. Time? Baseball's in a rut. If Ty Cobb came here looking for a chance, you'd send him, a, send him to Little Rock for three years. Come on, Joe. Let's go somewhere where we can be appreciated. Give me one more chance, will you, Mr. Van Buren? I love the Senators. So do I, and there's only a few of us left. Okay, get your bat. Buster. More seasoning, huh? The ball's only going for a 600-foot ride. It's the longest ball I ever saw in my life. Oh, it's swallowed my chewing tobacco. Oh. <laughs> okay, kid. You win. Get a uniform. You mean it? Yes, I mean it. Oh, baby! Oh, man, oh, man. Mr. Anthony, how can I ever thank you? I'll find some way. Oh, baby, this is wonderful. Well, listen, guys, don't think I'm crazy or going off my chump or nothing. But you got no idea what this means. Real good, uh, hey Joe. All my life I dreamed of. Just man. take it easy, kid. I, I, I will, I will. I don't want you to get so excited you'll tense up on us. <laughs> I must have tied the wrong knot. Let me wait on you, kid. I got a hunch you're gonna bring us some luck. Yeah, me too. Uh, oh no, you sit still. Well, I'm glad I came by this morning. Something happened after all. Give me the real story on this kid, will you? He's a natural talent. That's all. Don't be coy. Uh, thanks for the loan of your shoes. You did right by Joe. Oh, wait a minute. What happened to your own shoes? I saw you bring in a pair. Uh, those are too small for me. Your own shoes? Yeah, my, my feet must have swollen. It must have been the heat or the excitement or something. Uh, come on, Joe. I'll take you out to the office. Have you meet Mr. Welch. Great. Shouldn't I get my shoes? I've got it. Shoeless Joe Hardy. That's what you're going to call him? That's what everyone is going to call him. I'll give this club some publicity. Shoeless Joe, huh? Pretty good. I'll help you celebrate, boys. So what's the game? Let's make Joe famous. Sure, I'm willing. Okay, how are we going to make him famous? Shoeless Joe from Hannibal Mo. Shoeless Joe from Hannibal Mo. Shoot this show from Animal Bones. Lucky our beans, we have you kids. Shoot this show from Animal Bones. Just with the 
Joe Hardy is going to be interviewed by the press. Oh, oh, today. Oh, 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 so excited. I'm a real prima donna. Why do they have to keep after me? And why can't I just play baseball? Instead of answering a lot of dumb questions, making up things about my past. It's all right. If you're getting a jam, you can always turn to me. I don't want to get in a jam. Also, it seems as though you're forgetting who made you what you are today. I'm batting for you. As a baseball player, you're a triumph. As a man who goes through life with a bargain, you leave much to be desired. I followed you last night. Oh, and the night before. I see. Is there any objection to me going back where I used to live? Yes. You know what I think about those homes and wives. Ugh. I love baseball, Mr. Applegate. But I'm homesick. That's why I've sent for some diversion. I have a very attractive woman coming from Chicago. Oh, I don't like people from Chicago. I sold a house to a couple. Oh, nuts with that, Joe! I'm offering you a chance to meet one of the most fascinating women in the history of the world! No, thank you. Well, don't go back to Magnolia Street. Do you understand me? I forbid it. You don't owe me yet! Not until after midnight on the 24th. And then? Look, is it so bad you just want to go home? It's gauche. You're too big for that sentimental nonsense. Now you think things over. I am thinking things over. Think about a lot of things. A man doesn't know what he has until he loses it. When a man has the love of a woman, abuses it. I didn't know what I had when I had my own love. I didn't know what I had till I said goodbye, oh love. Yes, a man doesn't know what he has till it is
Mr. Wells would like to speak with you, Joe. Joe? Uh, yes, Mr. Wells? Uh, Joe, Miss Thorpe hadn't quite finished talking to you. You don't mind, do you, lad? No, I'll do anything you say, Mr. Wells. Come on in. Which one? Your family. They've all passed away. I haven't got any. Nobody. What about friends? Well, he's got one friend I know. Put me down, little girl. What about your friends back in Hannibal? Heard from any of them? If I may interject a word, I happen to represent the Hannibal Bugle. And I'm telling you right now that everyone in our little old town is as proud as pumpkins of little old Joe. Well, thank the old you and thank the old Joe. Will you quit picking on the boy? Do you have any other questions you can ask me? Okay, you think Washington's going to win the huh. pennant? When I see yeah. the channel. <laughs> Don't be so funny. It was so funny. It was so damn funny about Washington winning the pennant. Now, Joe. Who's winning more games than we are? Oh, Joe, I didn't mean that. I don't know why it's such a funny idea that Washington should cop the pennants. All we have to do is win games. Here, here. Well, I guess I talked too much. No, you didn't. These people don't know what it's like to have their heart in a ball club. OK, so we're not in first division. But we're climbing. We're moving up. So you think what you please, and I think what I please. Don't blame me for hoping. And don't blame me for loving this boy who made it possible for me to hope. Now you can go put in your newspapers that we're going to have the pen and soda by the 25th of September. <laughs> Isn't that what we think, Joe? If the season ends on the 25th? That's right. Well, I'll have it sewn up by the 24th. Now, that's a statement for you. How sneaky can a fellow get? <laughs> Senators 
are gonna win the pennant. <laughs> cheap, that's awful good. There'll be suicides, heart attacks, apoplexy, just like the good old days. But the key to the whole thing is this fellow. He wants to go back to his wife. For all I know, he's sneaking out right this minute. Ah, come on, Chief. You know I'm pretty good at getting men to forget their wives. And this is a routine case. I'll give him the standard vampire treatment. There isn't a home wrecker better on my staff than you, Lola. But this fellow's stubborn. Come on, Chief. You know I got what it takes. Don't make me brag. I took the thing out of the king.
excuse me. Come on in. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were the deliveries. Well, no, I, I came about that it, somebody told me you had a room you might be willing to rent. Me? Rent a room? And that's what it said. Some fellas down at the corner. I'm looking for a nice quiet place. My goodness, I've never even thought about renting a room. I wouldn't be any trouble. I, I can promise you that. Oh, I'm sure you wouldn't, but you see, Mr. Hardy. Joe Hardy. Oh, my husband's name is Joe. Is that so? It's quite a coincidence. He's away. That's too bad. Yes. For long? Not too long, I hope. He had to go on a trip. Uh, well, I guess that's why this fellow thought he might have an extra room. I wonder who that fellow could be. Hey. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me. One of my friends and her sister from my hometown are helping me to cook for the bridge club. Now, you'll just have to sit here and just make yourself at home. I'll be right back.
When Joe was back in Hannibal, did he have the same name? Yes. Hard. You spell it with an H. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, nothing. Something came to mind. It isn't important. He played a nice game tonight. His batting average went up four more points. Now it's 524. Not bad for a raw rookie. Yes, very raw. Lovely girl. I know she'll make some nice young man very unhappy. <laughs> Joe, 
I do not know how to talk to someone so famous like you. Yeah. Well, how about you, Miss West Indies? Let's go on some. It is silly. I'm ashamed he told you. Mr. Applegate tries to show me off too much. But because my picture is in the paper and maybe I am pleasing to look at in a bathing suit, is that important? Uh, well, as the fellows right here would say, it ain't bad. No, Joe. It's what's inside of me. If I'm an interesting person, that is important. Oh, no, I agree. What are those? Oh, and that's where we pack our duck for when we go on the road. Joe, you like music? You like dancing? Oh, well, I'm not so high to dancing. Uh, but I studied the cornet for three years. You help me down. Sure. Thank you. I actually studied for four years. My teacher said I had a natural lip. Uh, to play the cornet, you have to have good lips. Uh, oh, gee. <laughs> oh, Joe, you are a wonderful boy. I am? You are so honest. Honest, yes. But I'm dumb, too. Oh, I like people who do not brag about themselves. Well, me too. Uh, I don't know where Mr. Applegate is. Do you know you and I feel just alike about things? But we do? I think we shall come to know each other <coughs> quite well. Joe, would you like to take me someplace tonight? Gee, I really would like to. You know what Mr. Van Buren would say. He'd say, you lucky boy. No, no, he'd say it's late. He likes us to get to bed early. Any particular place? Oh, Joe, you think I'm a naughty girl. Uh, no, no, I don't. Only, you see, I rented a place out in Chevy Chase this afternoon. And, well, I promised him I'd move in tonight. I gotta go home. Home? Yeah, I promised him I'd be there. Oh, but you want to hurt Lola's feelings. No, no, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but that's why but I have Lola to... wants you to stay with her. We have to keep training and, and strict rules and all that. You can tell me all their rules. You're making this very complicated. Then be a good boy. I'm trying to. And do like Lola tells you to do. <laughs> Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets, and little man, little Lola wants you. Make up your mind to have no regrets. Recline yourself, resign yourself, you're through.
Lola? Yes, Joe? If it was you, I'd have to come home to every night. You'd want me to, wouldn't you? I see. You're an awfully nice girl. I wish I was two people. But I'm only one. And I'm married. What a flop! Just a routine case, huh? I was wrong. He's different. Oh, alibi, Ike. Never ran up against one like that before. Oh, Bosch and Double Bosch, get yourself a new line. Your methods are old fashioned. Whatever love I want. My chief, just give me time. Give me some more time. There isn't any time. They leave for their western trip. But when he comes back, I'm smoking it out. <coughs> when he comes back, I'm going to start a scandal in the neighborhood. What kind of scandal? Good Lord, that boy is living in that house with that woman. Aren't you shocked? I am. Do you 
Sonny? I'm not bubbling over with joy about the game we played today, if that's what you mean. Well, don't show it. You come to this season better than I've ever dreamed. Two games to go. Relax, we'll be the champions. Only gotta win one of those games. So wait, Joe cracked up on us today. Easy, easy. Hey, Joe, how does it feel to have the whole town on it? Feels like I wish I deserved it. Now we'll get him tomorrow, right, Joe? Here's the list, Mr. Van Buren. Thanks. Excuse us, Joe. Well, now I've got to practice my speech, anyway. Congratulations. Oh, it's you. I've become a fan. Well, officially, we're putting on a dance in your honor tonight. Yeah, that's very nice of you, Miss Cabana. Oh, no, Miss Cabana's gone. She failed dismally. No accent, didn't you notice? Kidding me again, I guess. No, just kidding myself. I'm just a dried up hussy who organized a fan club without instruction from Mr. A. You wanted us to lose today, didn't you? Well, didn't you hear him giving me the razz after the game? Personal things, anything to put me out. I said, I threw the ball into the stands. I was trying to hit him. You let in two runs and hit an old lady. He was delighted. What does he want? Well, tomorrow's the 24th. Yeah? I think he doesn't want to lose you. Well, what do you want? I don't want to be your friend. I guess you mean it. So, you make me feel girlish, and I'm 172 years old. You see, many men have loved me, hopelessly, but I felt nothing. And here you are, some dumb, ordinary, loyal man. You make me feel tender. It's quite exciting. You believe me now? Oh, father all! Out! Father all, what business is it of yours where Joe lives anyhow? I'm curious, that's all. Joe moved out of the house in Chevy Chase because... Joe, why'd you, why'd you change hotels? To be near you, of course. And let me tell you something else. We're gonna win that game tomorrow. You wait and see. That's the spirit. That's the way a ball player should talk, don't you think? Oh, I think a lot of things, my friend. You see, I've just come back from a trip to Hannibal, Missouri. Well, did you say hello to my friends at the Bugle? There is no Bugle, Mr. Apple Juice. You know my name. Yes, I do, but I don't know Joe Hardy. What was that crack? One thing I do know is his name isn't Joe Hardy. If you're referring to the rumor, that in reality, he's Shifty McCoy. I deny it emphatically. Who is Shifty McCoy? If you haven't heard it from me, I haven't said it. What's your big problem anyhow? Why do you say he's not Joe Hardy? Because nobody in Hannibal has ever seen or heard of a Joe Hardy. His birth is not registered there. He's a faker. Where did he come from? Don't be so nosy. Go home. Get married and have children.
him down again. What do you mean? Look around, homewrecker. We'll see who's got the pain. Mr. Welch has just had a call from the commissioner, and that's one call we always answer. <laughs> so he's asked me to take over. And now why don't we show Joe what we think of him?
they know an okay guy when they see one, and so do I. Yeah! Man, yeah. Joe ain't done nothing wrong. Mexican League fooey. It's that wise Thorpe J. Chubby, run out of town. Yeah! yeah. Four 
your minds with a single thought. I look at my girl. And I look at mine. Then with one fell swoop. Face to face. 
It's just psychology, baby. Just psychology. Do you think this noble young Joe Hardy will desert the men and the team who loves him? Never. But suppose. You're not supposed to suppose. I put a lot of effort into this case. He's an interesting boy. And once I got him for keeps, I'll make him throw the game. <laughs> and that'll kill him. As for me, I feel sorry for him. What did you say? I said I'm sorry for it. I have observed a certain laxity on your part. Have you forgotten every principle I've ever taught you? All right. A hundred times. I never feel sorry for anybody. Never feel sorry for anybody. No. Never feel sorry for anybody. I must like something never appropriate for, for the night series. Never feel sorry for anybody. Never feel sorry for That looks awful. I'll wear it. Never feel sorry for anybody. Never feel sorry for anybody. Now can anyone never guess who that is? Never Come in, Joe. All right, Lola. Knock it off. We got the greatest baseball player in history here. Let's do him homage. Well, that's very kind of you to say, Mr. Applegate, but well, I don't think Joe Hardy will ever make it to the Hall of Fame. One can never tell. I've made my decision. I would like to exercise the escape clause, which was to take place on the 24th, which is today. Aren't you being a little hasty? I've thought it all over, and I found there's more to life than trying to be a hero. Deep this boy, <coughs> very deep. I want out. I want to go back. Very well. An operation of this will have to take place at the witching hour. So at five minutes to midnight, just say the word. But what if the hearings still going on? Are you going to change me in front of everybody? Oh no. That would cause talk. All you have to do is say, let's go into the next room. Joe Hardy will go through those doors, and he will never return. Take it on the land, they'll say. I just wanted to be sure there was no misunderstanding. Goodbye, Lola. Never feel sorry. All right, Lola. Let's not just have the letters. Let's have the spirit. Never feel sorry for anybody. And if you get too impudent with me, I'll get Clementine in here for this work. Get too fresh with me, and I'll put you back on your broom. Now, when I go to the hearing, you make yourself scarce and think of three dirty tricks. Now, where's that damn closet? One, if ever I have seen one, and 
near one, fiddling through that lovely blaze. Antoinette, safety clean, where's our quaint guillotine? <laughs> Those were the good old days. I see Indians drinking an empty cup of wind. When stealthy, the settlers was the latest craze. And that glorious morn, Jack the Ripper was born. Yeah. Those were the good old days. I'd sit on my rocking chair, so peacefully rocking there, counting my blessings by the score. The rack was in fashion, the plagues were my passion. Each day held a new joy in store. Was anybody happy? Was anybody happy? No! Thank you. <laughs> I see cannibals of function. I miss me when The years may have flown, but the memories stay. Like the hope that was dashed when the stock market crashed. <laughs> Those were the good old days. I flung a million miles or more. Blush of 
of shame to your fair brow, and a tear to many an eye. Joe Hardy's birth wasn't registered because his parents weren't married. I hope you're satisfied. Yes, yes, we'll drop that line of inquiry. Now I hope this remorseless inquisition has reached its climax. <laughs> Good news. My witness from Mexico City will be here in 30 minutes. 30 minutes? It's a quarter of 12 now. I can't wait. Mr. Commissioner, I've got to say one thing. I've got to make one thing clear. I have been jeered and abused because I wrote that story. But I didn't originate the rumor about a ship to McCoy. I heard it from somebody else. Well, who? That platitudinous manager of our young phenom, Mr. Applegate. Applegate? Oh, yeah. He told you that. Down. Silence! Mr. Applegate, do I understand? This is one of the most dastardly misrepresentations. Just answer the question. I am called here to answer questions. Instead, let me ask a question. When my time comes to fight breath and corruption in organized baseball, why am I called upon here to quibble with these fellow travelers? We came here to witness. Uh, just a oh, second, lady. Oh, the spirit, Mrs. Boyd! Get your hands off me! Yes, please. We decided we should speak up. We're a material witness then. We want to take the stand and testify. We'll take an oath or, or anything. Why, Mrs. Hawkins! Hello, Meg. How are you? Oh, it's the Miller girls! Hello, girl. How are y'all? Well, you all seem to be old acquaintances. You see, I didn't remember Joe at first, but, but then once I remembered, I reminded the girls, and soon they remembered him, too. Why, hello there, Joe. My, I hardly recognized him. He's grown up so. You knew him? Of course. We picked huckleberries together. Why, don't you remember him? Hawkins? He used to get the mail for old Mrs. Peeper. It's five minutes to midnight. What is it, Mr. Hardy? Uh, I'd like to talk with Mr. Applegate in the other room, please. Wait, Joe. She remembers. Oh, yes, sure. Now I remember. Ha! I knew it. I knew you would die. Quiet, please. That boy sat right in that chair and let him call the liar to his face. Now, by God, you're vindicated. No one leaves the room! Slipped four pills into it. 
He won't wake up till after the game. <coughs> but I wanted him to be there. Well, I wanted him to have to sit right there and watch us win the pennants. If he were there, you wouldn't win. Betty's putting me in center field. I wouldn't have to look at him or, or even hear him yelling. That doesn't matter. He owns you now. Oh. Well, I guess I didn't know how it worked. What were you, Lola? I was the ugliest woman in Providence, Rhode Island. It would be good and sore what you did. What will he turn you back? He threatens. Two lost souls. I don't know whether to cry or make jokes. Jokes don't make jokes. We're together tonight. Maybe never again. Oh, we might as well make the best of it. Please. How do we go about doing that? I think you can think of some way. Well, give me a second, I'll think of something. I've got it. Now what's the next step? Joe, would you like to take Lola someplace tonight? Yes, I would. It took me a long time, didn't it? That music and that dancing. Yeah. Please, no more questions about the game. Tonight, we're here to have fun. And so are we. That's what I mean. Everyone has fun. You're just relaxing. So are we. 
whole thing was a framework. We just trying to teach y'all the game. Yeah. If we don't stay out here tonight, I don't think we'll ever get tickets. Yeah, one guy told me that there were these 200 guys in the stadium already. I think it's crazy. Don't be ridiculous, Doris. We'll be perfectly comfortable. We're ready for anything. Come on, Joe! 
Where's Joe? He's disappeared. He can't disappear. Well, I can't find him. Looks like he got hit while he was running to that ball. But that's what I saw. He took off like a rat. Then it looked like something hit him. He hobbled like he was lame. And he looked like a different man. Clumsy. There she goes, I thought. We blow it again. Then by God, he made that last lunge and caught the ball. I tried to get to him to see what was the matter, but the crowd got in the way. He ran into the clubhouse, and I haven't seen him since. Betty! Joe's clothes are gone. He found his pants by his locker. Come on. Neither Mr. Welch or Benny Van Buren will affirm or deny the disappearance of Joe Hart. However, many of the players have admitted from the moment he caught the ball and ran into the clubhouse, none of them have seen him. Where is he? Me. 